Hello, and welcome to the Drum History Podcast. I'm your host, Bart Vanderzee, and today we have our old friend, Mr. Chris Ruscio, back on. Chris, welcome back, brother. Hey, how's it going? Good to be back, finally. <laughs> yes. <laughs> this we've one, been talking uh, about this for a long yeah. time. You've been working on it for a long time. Yeah, well, almost about a year we've been talking about this and working on it here and there, you know. Yeah, yeah. So, so today we're talking about Lars Ulrich's studio kits, and uh, we've done a whole series about Lars's drum sets uh, which were primarily used for live because you said right off the bat, the studio kits are a different beast. Yeah. Some crossover, yes, right? Some crossover. And, you know, when they start getting more popular around and, and justice for all is when they, when things start really changing black album, everybody knows that's uh, that changes completely. And then when we get up to St. Anger, wow. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Different story. So, But, you know, a lot of the tour kits, there's pieces here and pieces there, and there's all kinds of stuff going on. So we are in for a wild ride the next couple <laughs> episodes. Yeah, well, or, or yeah, yeah. This might be a multi-parter. We like again, people probably from the last one remember. Usually, I mean, my personal limit is usually like once it hits two hours ish of recording, then we usually kind of say, all right, let's take a break and we'll come back for part two. So we we'll see how far we get. But um, before we jump in, I just got to say that that. Part one was very well received. Part one and part two, I mean, the, the first series. I will put a link in the description. I'll probably make a playlist of like Lars, you know, gear talk because there's now going to be four or five different episodes just on that with Chris, um, who's done all this amazing work, uh, really digging in and people loved it. I think the three original ones we did, part one, part two, and then there was a stolen drum set. <laughs> thing which yeah, is a whole nother yeah. right, conversation right. which didn't really pan out but um i think those are combined hit almost at a hundred thousand uh, views over the uh, three of them that's so. that's good to hear um I'm, yes. I'm glad everybody enjoyed them and uh i definitely got to take a minute to thank everybody for commenting on them you know uh yeah i mean i have even from the comments there's things that i've learned uh that i never knew before for instance i remember when we were discussing the tape pattern in the early years on the kill em all drums how it was like there was like a cross somebody had mentioned you know that's uh that's the denmark flag and it was like oh that's the denmark flag <laughs> it's kind why of, did i oh, think of it? yeah yeah so yeah. uh a lot of good things came from that yeah so, yeah i really do i mean honestly you of course you get your bad apple every once in a while who's like lars sucks yeah. or something but but it's like for the most part it's on all these gear episodes it's super like positive and like people just telling huge long stories of their first experience yeah. with metallica and i love that yeah. and uh and it's really cool yeah, most, so. most of it was really good so and i mean you're always gonna have your hate for lars but it, it is what it is but most of it was really good like you said and uh, i'm just i'm glad everybody's getting something out of it and enjoying it so because I, yes. I like doing it so and, uh, yes I'm for lars people. it's it's windiest <laughs> at the top of the mountain you know what i mean there you go uh, so perfect what do you say live laugh lars <laughs> <laughs> you need a bumper sticker that says <laughs> so but it, it, it's been good so i'm glad everybody has enjoyed yes so. yes i certainly have let's hop in here okay. uh recently we've had more info pop up yes in the, in the which we'll get to that in those in those points so there's very new info yes there was but, um, um yeah, there was a couple podcasts that came out. I think well, one was a podcast uh, over the winter uh, discussing Kill 'Em All, and you know we always kind of knew what it was, but there was more in depth, clear pictures that came out. And for instance, we saw that uh, black variation he's using using Zildjian symbols. We didn't we didn't know that last time, so that's something we discovered. And then they did that uh, with Gunner. They did that black album. Uh, kind of the video on the studio kit, and you had uh, Ross Garfield from the Drum Doctors in there, and yeah. that, and that, uh, you know, that uh, opened up a lot of information. That you, it's hard to tell. A lot of, the, especially with the studio kit, a lot of it was me watching because the videos are out there, but I would have to take you know my phone and take a picture off the TV because when you're in the studio, and naturally there's not much uh, media in the studio. You know, the, yeah. the tour kits, there's media everywhere, but the studio, uh, the studio gear. There's not much. So a lot of the pictures are crude. And so when they released that video of the Black Album, it cleared up stuff like colors and sizes. So that was pretty cool. So it's good to see those yeah. two come out. Yeah. I mean, because so. then you're not, you don't have phone cameras. You can't take 100 <laughs> pictures a day. Yeah. It would be film that you're getting developed and right. stuff. And uh, yeah, the video with Gunner is awesome. He sent it to me and was like, yeah. and he said, hey, I loved the series you did with Chris about um, the 
you know, tour kits. And then he sent that and I was like, oh my God, we're going to be doing a studio <laughs> yeah. kit and episode. That, so that was, cool. that was cool to see. And I'm just going to make a really quick point. That is a mounted 16 by 16. It's literally <laughs> a floor. T- I didn't think it got any better than si- bigger than 16 by 15, but bigger or better. <laughs> we'll, we'll discuss that later. But so, yes. that, so that was cool to see. So, yes, very cool. All right. Well, let's give the people what they uh, came yes. towards here here today and uh, jump in. If you're listening uh, while you're walking the dog or doing the dishes, then <laughs> we're, you're going to hear us describing some photos that we're going to be looking at that are on YouTube. These ones, the gear ones especially, are very visual heavy, but we're going to do our absolute best to describe everything we're looking at. But uh, if you're here on YouTube, then I've got a screen share going on where I'm going to pull up a ton of photos that uh, Chris sent me. Also jumping back to some from the first episode. And uh, so there may be a second or two while we're pulling things up in between, but I'll try and edit it out so it's smooth and clean. But okay, um, okay. Chris, where do we begin Um, here at the beginning? So we're going to start way back, uh, you know, um, we're going to go back to that natural Camco Renaissance kit, you know, before before the second variation um, Kill Em All kit. So before we we get going, I want to thank a gentleman named uh, Eric Vitale. Uh, He is kind of like, the, he's like the Lars rare, rare kit archive of pictures. You know, anytime I'd say, "Hey, you know what this was? This was." He had a picture for it. The That's guy, awesome. the guy's got like every uh, uh, magazine, the So What magazine. He's got like every issue. So yeah. I, I definitely wanted to thank him for the help. But let's let's dig into that kit. So early on, you know, they're not that popular. So you kind of got to use what, what you have to record these albums. Everybody knows. Um, I'm, I'm sure you've had a couple of high school bands. I've had high school bands. It's, it's, totally. it's kind of like that situation. You just, you just run what you have, you know? So back then, and we discussed this in the last episode, he had the Camco Renaissance, the natural runs before he painted it. Um, he, he used this at the time, at the, at this time, pretty much for power metal, uh, the demo power metal, no life to leather. Um, we also have the live metal up your ass album that was at the old Waldorf, I believe. Uh, so he would have most likely used that kit on these Hmm. demos. So that was awesome. Yeah. So that was a seven piece. And I do want to make a correction last time. And everybody called me out on it. The snare, (laughs) it was a Slingerland Chrome over brass. You called it. I messed it up. So let's make that correction. <laughs> How dare you, Chris? <laughs> so, yeah. So you, every- you'll, you'll get 6,000 things correct with 400 <laughs> yes. pictures, but one thing wrong. Yes. So you'll and, hear about it. No, it's and all right. that's where the comments are great. They'll point things like that out. You can't, I don't take offense to that. I'm glad I learned that. So thank you. So it was a Camco seven piece. We won't go too deep into it because we did that in the other episodes, but for those demos, he's using this Camco seven piece. With the flag of Denmark, the Danish flag on the bottom, which we now know, which yes, is super cool. We learned um, that from the so. comments. That was cool. Thank you, everybody. Yes. So we're going to assume he's using the Zildjian A's. When I spoke about that podcast that came out over the winter when he had the second variation, yep. we, we could definitely now see Zildjians. So I'm going to assume there were Zildjians in this one also. So, And this is the kit that is now gone this kit is yeah. no more and was stolen and it was not discovered on our podcast no. on the previous episode <laughs> which was a flop which uh, did no. really well but it was a complete the Geraldo. Uh, yeah, the, yeah the <laughs> exactly so um you have those demos and they were most likely uh, all the information says they were recorded in ron's garage ron mcgovney's garage you know maybe some was worked on in lars garage you know they're, they're very young they're they're in high school at this time or just getting out of high school there's really no studio per se but i thought it was important to mention this because this particular variation was used on those four um demos and of course the metal massacre demo everybody knows that one that's the one with brian slagle that pretty much got them you know out there and recognized so Hmm. this is what he was going to use this is what he used on those demos this is before kill them all and all that so uh we now know and, and it was also mentioned in the comments it probably wasn't a 12 by 9 the first rack time it was a 12 by 8 a lot of the uh a lot of people had mentioned that too so i might have gotten that wrong so let's correct that it was a 12 by 8 and it was a camco pedal used i think we said yamaha pedal last time it was a camco pedal these are things that were learned from the video yes. and everything so if you want more information on that again check out our first podcast that we did our first episode 
and I don't really know any videos that this kid is in. So but you can yeah. uh, you can listen to No Life to Leather, and and that's pretty much recorded all that. So, and this could be out there. We've done some. You know, we did our episode where someone came forward with it and it wasn't the kid at all. No, it wasn't the kid uh, at all. Yeah, if you want to see two disappointed people, <laughs> uh, wait, watch that. And then we're like, oh, that's not it. Yeah. But um, it, it could still be out there. We don't know. It could, all, it could but, still be out there. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. You, we'll probably never know, but it's uh, yeah. it's fun to think about it. But <laughs> it's fun to think about. All right, Chris. So, so then where do, where do we go from so, there? So uh, we know they went up to San Francisco. And now we're going to go to the second variation of that Camco Renaissance. Um, every time we saw the uh, first variation, Ron McGovney was in the picture. And every time we see this new variation, Cliff is in the picture. So I know it's that time period when they went to San Francisco. So it. pretty much it's the same. What he did is he added the second kick drum. And I want to speak a little bit about that, too. Um, there was a gentleman and he. He commented very heavily on the first episode and he reached out to me directly and he gave me some very detailed pictures. I think his name was Leo or Peter or something. He showed me there's two different kick drums on that black variation. There's mm. the original Camco and it looks like Lars had added either a superstar or an imperial star kick drum because the lugs are completely different. So, and then when you think about it, it's like, especially nowadays, you, you can't even really find a Camco kit. How are you going to find a, a a single kick drum laying around? And he, yeah. he probably couldn't back then. Yeah. So, no, that's amazing. Yeah. So, so yeah, that's the picture right now. And there's, it's, it's two different kick drums. So I didn't know that in the first episode, but I learned that. So, uh, so that's something I wanted to bring to light. <laughs> yes, which to, to a touring band who's playing all over town, who cares? Is they in their, they're painted black. They're just the, the, the still the kid has been. <laughs> still don't, don't know what he used. I don't know if it was house paint. I don't know if he sprayed it, but that's what it is. So now um, this is what was used to record Kill 'Em All. Now, you know, Kill 'Em All was recorded in May uh, 83 and it was recorded not too far from me, believe it or believe it or not. Rochester, New York. I think it was called Music America or Barrett Alley. I hear all kinds of names, but that's that's really a couple hours for me. I still I've been to Rochester many times. Yeah. My great grandparents were in, uh, lived in Rochester, uh, the home of Kodak. If yes. I'm not uh, <laughs> mistaken, yeah. So that was recorded up there, and you know that's when they went from the West Coast to the East Coast, and they sent Dave Mustaine back on the bus, and everybody knows that story. <laughs> so this out, <laughs> yeah. Sad story. Poor Dave. Sad story. <laughs> I met Dave Mustaine. I worked at a studio, and they did a guitar a dave mustaine meet and greet experience before a i think it's the Jimi hendrix uh, experienced show and it was dave mustaine and zach wild and joe bonamassa and all these guys and dave mustaine did a meet and greet at the studio and i was the one who let him in and let people in and he was a nice guy yeah he was very nice guy he was kind of like you know what you expect of like just right, another right. day yeah. he's doing this another day <laughs> I, but, um, I, I feel bad for him in the story but that's i didn't bring it up <laughs> <laughs> that's here nor there but yeah. but everybody anyway. knows that story. Now they're on the East Coast, so they're with um, Megaforce, and they're recording up in Rochester. And we got some really cool pictures that were released from that podcast that we talked about earlier. Um, we see uh, we see now that it's Zildjian symbols, like I mentioned earlier, and there's even a photo with Lars in the bathroom with the toms. <laughs> was, you know, the story says he was trying to get a heavier sound hmm. out of those. So we see uh, we see that. A few toms in the bathroom. Uh, apparently, it didn't work out. They said it was haunted from the story. Who knows? <laughs> <laughs> so uh, that was that was a pretty cool thing that was released. So we know it was recorded uh, in Rochester, and it's that Camco Renaissance that he uh, added the kick drum, uh, either Imperial Star or Superstar kick drum, and painted black. Um, like last time with uh, Yamaha hardware. Now we could see, which was also mentioned in the comments, that he's using King Beat pedals. We can see a picture. Somebody pointed that out—a clear picture that it was King Tom of King Beats on this. So that was yeah. that was pretty interesting. Uh, so it's a Camco eight piece at this time, Slingerland Chrome over brass snare. <laughs> Definitely, there you go. We know that. <laughs> and so we see pinstripe heads, um, ambassadors on the bottom. Pretty much the same exact kit that he went on tour with after hmm. this album. So this is where the tour kits are still kind of. They're doubling as studio kits at this time. They're they're not that popular, and there's not yeah. much money going around. And 
that's what you do. You run what you brung. <laughs> Every time I've been in the studio, my studio kit is my only drum set I own at that point. Exactly. <laughs> Same here. Yeah. So this yeah. this is not, you know, out of the ordinary at all. So so right no. now we're we're moving kind of quickly. This episode is brought to you by Atlanta Drum Shop. Atlanta Drum Shop is Atlanta's only one-stop shop for drummers' needs. New, pre-owned, vintage, consignment, rentals, repairs, lessons, you name it, Atlanta Drum Shop does it all. Atlanta Drum Shop's next clinic is going to feature the amazing Justin Scott on July 16th at 7 p.m. Please go to atlantadrumshop.com where you can buy gear and also stay up to date on future clinics like the one they're doing with the great Justin Scott on July 16th. And also follow them at Atlanta Drum Shop on all social media. Thanks to Atlanta Drum Shop for sponsoring this episode. But popularity is now skyrocketing. I mean, this is they're they're breaking out pretty much yes, as, a, as a band. Absolutely, uh, they're getting a little bit more popular. Uh, still, you know, they're going to get signed to Elektra eventually, but they're still with Megaforce at this time. So yep, they're still yep. doing a, they're doing kind of a United States tour, smaller clubs and stuff like that. So of course, yep. those drum sets would double as studio kits too. So now we're that in that time of history, and we've discussed it many times. It gets stolen. <laughs> yeah. so yeah we don't know where it is we don't yeah. know where it is we probably never will but uh that kit gets stolen so now they have to record ride the lightning and this is where this was very difficult for me i really don't have much information i've talked to a lot of people i've talked to a lot of top people too believe it or not and nobody can really find information so you know, we know they were stolen in January '84. These black, uh, these black camcos were stolen in '84, and we know the Ludwig's come in after that. That's right. But you have to remember, Ride the Lightning started. It's they started recording Ride the Lightning in February '84, after that kit was stolen. So when I think about it, it seems to me to be too soon for the Ludwig's, and definitely too late for these camcos. So I really don't know what he used on this album. There was a few pictures. Um, I think, I, I forget where it was. It was in Paris somewhere. It's the only thing I had to go on. And I couldn't make the drum kit out. I couldn't make it out at all. Hmm. So that is a real, you know, kind of open area. For, I, I just... I don't know. <laughs> so it's the so, mystery between losing the camp, the camp goes getting stolen and then getting the Ludwig set. Right. It's kind of a, the in-between period. Yeah, of, there's a lull there. So okay. I have no information on that. And I didn't want to leave, you know, I, I, I didn't want to leave this area in time, you know, with, with no information. So I wanted to kind of give everybody an Easter egg. Um, <laughs> so I want to talk about the night they were signed to Electra. August 3rd, 1984, they get signed to Electra, And this is some rare photos here. Uh, I don't think many people know. They used Charlie Benante's kit that night because he didn't have the Ludwigs. We know the Camcos were stolen. So he ended up using Charlie Benante's kit. He borrowed that. They were playing with Raven Anthrax at the Roseland Ballroom. They actually got signed that night to Electra. So we, there's a few pictures we see Lars with Charlie Benante's. It's Aspen White Imperial Star. And it's not mm. it's not the extra sizes. It's not the power tops. Um, I think it's like a, I, th I think it's like a twelve by eight, a thirteen by nine, a uh, fourteen by ten, and a fifteen by twelve. And you know your floor tom is eighteen by sixteen, and yeah. probably the twenty two by sixteen kicks. So that that was something really cool I wanted to mention. Could have went into the last episode, but we we overlooked it. But no, that's so I'm yeah, gonna, it's good to get it all out now. <laughs> I'm gonna get yeah. I'm gonna put it here because I didn't have much information for Ride the Lightning Studio for you. Absolutely. So that was just uh, I searched for a year and I contacted a lot of people and just nobody seems to know. So my gut, it's probably a rental kit, honestly. Yeah. Maybe a studio house kit or something, or because we because we know Ride the Lightning is now recorded in Denmark at Sweet Silent Studios. And we know Fleming uh, Rasmussen produced that one along with the next two. And who knows what's out there or what he used. I mean, that's only yeah. the only period of time I really had a hard time with. So I... Well, that's... I mean, it's very... <laughs> it's it's a different continent <laughs> it's yeah. like it, it's kind of hard to like but but really maybe that's more stuff where someone will come forward Hopefully. and say oh yeah yeah i have uh, that's that that's what picture. i'm hoping because uh, a lot of people I, I i contacted a lot of people and nobody could really 
give me an answer, honestly. So yeah. so then I figured I would give you the Charlie Benante kit. I thought that was pretty cool. And yeah. uh, just to kind of fill that little area there, <laughs> fried no, lightning. These are beautiful. So just kind of yeah, it's pretty fits much right into his vibe. But Tama, you, you know, know, you have the Omnis, yeah. Omnisphere Tom mounts. We could see the clear coated controlled um, dot on the batter heads. That's a little different. I didn't see. I haven't seen that much back then. But hey, that's Charlie's yeah. kid. It's different. Um, they got signed that night, and uh, the rest is history. So with that, yeah. so now we know he's coming up on his endorsements and everything. Um, things are going to start changing. So. Master of Puppets recorded in uh, Denmark, uh, Sweet Silent Studios, Fleming Rasmussen, uh, September 1985. Bringing back a tour kit. Uh, Cherry Wine Tom Superstar, same one we discussed in episode one. Um, that's what he used to record Master of Puppets on. Um, but he took away floor Tom. He took the second floor Tom away. So uh, those Toms are 12 by 11, 13 by 12, 14 by 13. 15 by 14 and you had the two uh, uh you had an 18 by 16 in the studio on tour he had a 20 by 18 but in the studio he got rid of one of the floor toms we can see that in the pictures so yeah. also you're going to use um remo pinstrip clear on that uh on those drums there uh the 6904 tama titans were your stands and uh the snare we should talk about the snare a little bit that was always said to be rick allen's black beauty ludwig black beauty uh, yeah. we touched a tiny bit on that in episode one, but that's, sure. that, that's a known fact that that's what Master Puppets was recorded on. He didn't like the way his Mastercraft sounded or whatever he was using on the tour kit. And he went to Rick Allen, they were good friends. And he asked if he could borrow his snare and let him borrow it. And that's what he used on Master Puppets. So same as the tour, uh, same as on tour, the Tama Omni Lock Tom mounts, uh, really good. Um, he had the King Beat pedal still at this time. Uh, the symbols are your Zildjian A, as we can see in the pictures. I don't know if this was known or if this is like kind of you hear people tell rumors or whatever. Like, is he like a really good studio drummer? You know what I mean? Some guys are killer live and then they kind of struggle in the studio. He seems like, I mean, they're his parts. I mean, is he, how, how does he do in the studio or do we know that? Well, the, <laughs> the only information we have is about <laughs> Justice for All when they were turning down the bass and everything. But Oh, yeah, yeah, and, yeah. yeah. And a lot of things were cut in and it's hard to tell, you know, I mean, the parts we hear are amazing. They're just, it sounds they're great. just amazing. So, and yeah, I do, but, I do remember uh, Fleming saying that, you know, when he did uh, the classic double bass part in one, he nailed it first shot. Wow. He said, don't, okay. don't even go back. You, you just nailed it first shot. So that's awesome. You know, so I think he was pretty good, you know. Which that's a part that like anytime you sit on a double bass kit, you kind of start. The first thing you you got to play that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And, it, and yeah. it was done in one shot. So with, without being there, you know, I, I can't tell you 100%, but I imagine. I mean, I, of course, we, we've yeah, yeah, but seen I figured, them live, you know. Yeah. Oh, of course. And so, But some guys like fall apart and then they call in Hal Blaine or something. Yeah. Not in this case with Metallica, but you know what I mean. Yeah. Where yeah. Like, there's a studio drummer, but. No, I, um, I think he did everything yeah. on his own. Okay. So. Yeah. So that that's that's your master of puppets. Um, we see a little bit of tape on the bottom heads too. That's all studio stuff, you know. Yep. To yep. Uh, cut down on Looks the ring like, and everything. I mean, we could Mike's seems kind of like a thing where you can only tell with what's in a picture, but <sighs> yeah, your looks like Sennheiser four twenty ones, and and he's got. It looks like it honestly back here. It looks like there's another drum. Yeah, there's this maybe is that a ten a ten inch tom? I mean. We s it looks like there's another, and then there's another. There's something else way behind yeah. them back here. It's kind of hard for you to see over my yeah. screen or whatever, but uh, it looks like there's just some extra drums sitting back there with long lugs. Oh yeah, yep. Yeah. The high tension, as as I've I've found out from some of the comments. Yeah. Thank you. It's a high tension lug. <laughs> okay, that something makes sense. I just didn't know. Oh my, I've heard it, but there you yeah. go. Or are those two single lugs? Or are they I, I, I am seeing this like everybody else for the first time. That's something I didn't even notice. So that's pretty cool. We're zooming in here. Yeah. We're, we're enhancing. We're using all the modern technology <laughs> at our fingertips to enhance. From an 85 picture. <laughs> From an 85 picture. We're getting surgical here. Uh, and then we got a sign back here that says something. Stoke. S-T-O. Stoke fire. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know could be danish pretty cool. i've never seen that pretty cool you know i've yeah. se i've seen these pictures hundreds of times and i never noticed that so you brought it up so that's cool could that be well, a, could that be a 10 inch tom you know could it be 
it, it looks even a little bit shallower, like it could be a regular uh, Tom and not one of the extra sizes. That could be something, too. It does look like the same color. Yes. It looks, it looks it like looks it's working cherry for the wine. same. But, yes. but when I look at that kit, and I know that that's one of the tour kits, that drum didn't match anything from the tour. So we said the only thing missing from that is the second floor Tom. So yeah. that's definitely something different back there that you uh, you brought up. Yeah. So oh. hard to tell you what that is. You heard it here first, folks. <laughs> <laughs> Everything at this point, you know, is still kind of, like I said, whatever he used on tour, brought it into the studio, made some little adjustments, took a few pieces off, you know, added some different stuff. But, you know, there could yeah. be a lot more going on that we just can't see from the pictures, you know. I don't know this, but I feel like now with modern recording, it's like, people will use one snare drum on the chorus mm -hmm. and then they'll use another snare drum for just the verse. Yeah. And then the intro they'll, they'll, they'll comp in or put in like, like punch in to use a third, like they will use multiple snares in one song. I may be wrong, but I don't think that happened quite as much back then. It was <laughs> tape and it was more yeah. just like one, one shot all the way through. If you can. Yeah. Back then. I mean, we, we're going to get into that insane anger. Yes, and sure. load and reload. But right now, like you said, I think it's just the Black Beauty. It's the only snare at the time. Um, Good choice. Yeah. And I think I mentioned it, but that's the 6904 stands, the Tama Titans. Excellent stands. Yep. You know, that that's one thing that really doesn't change from point A to point B. And still to this day, it's the Titans. You know, it changed from the 6904 Titans to the HC-104 TB stilts. Still to hmm. this day, it looks like, and there isn't much information on 72 seasons. I have two pictures, and it was those Tama Titan stilts. They just stand the test of time. and <laughs> They're just amazing stands. And, yeah. and every studio picture I've ever seen, he's using the Tama Titans for stands. So, well, if it works, keep using absolutely. it. Absolutely. Know? So... We've got some pictures, too, of them yes. kind of hanging out in the studio by the board. There's Cliff. These yeah. are like, you know, photographer. Yeah you know, studio picks. Because like I said, uh, there isn't much out there when you're in the studio for media. So I'm just digging up everything I could find. And <laughs> yeah, there's not much. Which it's really, it's cool to be able to see it. Yeah. And, um, all right, let's keep moving there. So that's master of puppets. I mean, again, if, if, if people are feeling like, like a lot of the details of these ones we're talking about now, again, won't, I won't say it again, but check out part one, part two of the original series. Cause there's just details about everything. Details about everything. That's why I'm kind of, you know, just glossing over every every little detail of these kits because we, yeah. we discussed we already it already. talked about it. But yeah. you do have to mention it because that's what's in the studio. Of course. So, of course. Yeah. All right. So. Where do we go from there? So moving on, you know, unfortunately, what happened to Cliff, everybody knows what happened to Cliff. So Jason comes in. So between Master and Puppets and, and Justice for All, they do garage, uh, garage days. Um kind of just like a tune up for Jason or whatever, or, you know, I don't know particularly what they call it, what they, what they said it was a tune up or just something to get him comfortable. But yeah, it makes sense. Like getting warmed right. up with the band and something yeah. quick. They didn't spend a lot of time in the studio. I think I remember reading and I do apologize. I have notes on this cause there's just so much variations, <laughs> Yeah, but that was recorded at A&M studios in Santa Monica, California. They basically went in there really quick. And they did everything themselves. Um, and a lot of it was written in Lars's garage, I believe, at the time, over there by San Francisco. And for the pic uh, the pictures that we see on that one are, again, Thomas Hooper stars, but they're the chrome variation, the U.S. tour variation. You know, this is the one where the two floor toms, so they're both 18 by 16, same size as I gave you as the last one, but they're chrome covered, wrapped for him. It's not a cherry wine paint. I believe yeah. I believe it's probably natural under that chrome wrap. Like I said, I've never seen another one. I've never seen an orphan, anything like that. So yeah. same sizes. They're the extra sizes, you know. Uh, I'll run through them again. 12 by 11, 13 by 12, 14 by 13, 15 by 14 on the rack, Tom. Uh, two 18 by 16s, 24 by 16s on the kicks. Um, on this one, I don't know what he's using for snare. I'm going to assume it was the Mastercraft that he went on tour with. That Tama Mastercraft snare for the Garage Days recording. for the Garage Days in recording. Lars's garage. In, right in Lars's garage, they wrote it. They went over to A oh. and M Studios to record it quickly. They were it, they were in it, and yeah. out. So uh, 
that's what I believe it was. It was probably your identical, you know, U.S. tour variation of the Thomas Superstars that he used. Got it. So everybody's familiar with that one. Um, Tom King beat pedals, 6904 stands. Uh, you know, the Remo uh, clear control dots on the top, ambassadors on the bottoms. I know the floor toms, you know, they had pinstripes, Remo pinstripes on them. They were a little different. Um, I remember some pictures where there was like no bottom head and you'd have... Yeah. You'd have like the, you know, mic stuck right up in there. Right, right. Um, but so maybe they did that in the studio. Who knows? Possibly, uh, possibly. Not many pictures on it. So, yeah. But yeah, you know, it still had the cherry wine hoops on it. Everybody, we, we spoke about that in depth. So it's pretty much the same kit. Okay, so Garage Days comes out and and now they, uh, they write uh, Injustice for All. Now, Injustice for All is where things start to change. Um, and they start doing variations of things. So Injustice for All was recorded in one-on-one studios in LA. And the, the story is they couldn't get Fleming for this album. So they went with, I think it was Mike Klink from Guns N' Roses. And they did a little bit with him and they were just, they were miserable with it. They hated the way everything sounded. Hmm. And they called Fleming and they begged him to come back and do this album. We're, we're not feeling it with this guy. So that's the funny story. But uh, so the recording of this album is where things start to change a little bit. So, and uh, as far as I'm concerned, this is my opinion. I think it's the best sounding kick drum of all the albums. (laughs) Usually only drummers (laughs) say that. Yeah. Yeah, Um, sure. Or care. (laughs) Exactly. Everybody else says it's mixed horribly. There's no bass, which is true. Yeah. But you know, my, my opinion, I think the kick drum sounds the best and other drummers have said that to me. How does he get that? How does he get that sound? Well, in in this particular situation, you you have to remember, you know, these guys are spending all kinds of money and there's all kinds of effects and and whatnot. But the base of it was the Thomas Superstar, uh, the chrome covered superstar kick drums that that's what he used for Injustice for All. 24 by 16, Thomas Superstar, Birch, six by Birch. Those were used for the kick drums in Injustice for All. Now, the rack toms were a little different. Uh, at the time, uh, Tama Grandstar just came into the picture. They, they came in a little earlier, but this is the first time he's going to use it. So as we can tell from the pictures, these are Grandstar customs. Um, I can tell they're customs because the interior, the interior of this drum is, is the same color as the exterior. They're, they're stained or painted, whatever you want to say. So I know they're Grandstar customs. And we said last episode, nine ply birch, really, really heavy drums. Um, yeah, a little bit of variation. There's a, there's a, there's some white toms and then there's a black, it looks like a black 13 by 12 in there. And then in the, yeah. then in the background, we see, uh, some more of the, uh, the white piano white, I'm going to call it drums in the background. We see a big stack of heads. Uh, the snare is very difficult. I, I don't know what snare he, he used for this album. I'm probably going to assume maybe another Mastercraft, you know, yeah. um, there's been rumors that he used the Black Beauty, Rick Allen's Black Beauty for this. That I, I I don't think so. I don't know really though, but yeah, could be. So. I mean, but now it seems like uh, he's in the f- having the fun part of like let's use this tom, yes. let's use this bass drum, let's use these yes. toms here. What right. sounds best? Because again, you're not. It's not on stage. Who cares? Right. Right. And, and that's what we could see from the heads. I mean, we see some basic, just generic, clear heads with maybe a, a, a porthole in it, a 12, 13 inch porthole in it. Who cares? You're not on stage. No Metallica. No Metallica. Decal. No Tama. Um, the symbols are no longer on the side. They're in the front, probably wherever is the most comfortable for him. Um, which is kind of funny to me is even though we're not on stage, we see our friend the monkey again. <laughs> the monkey? I was going to say, there's <laughs> yeah, the monkey. There's the monkey. He's back. And the Danish flag is there. And another interesting thing on this kit in the studio is he's using the Omni Lock Tom mounts. Now, the Omni, uh, excuse me, Omni Lock Tom mounts were made specifically for the superstars, and they had the Tom mount on the shell for that. The Grand Stars were a little different, especially the Customs at this time had kind of like a diagonal rod that came up from the MTH 50, and the mount on the shell fit that rod. It, it it was it was a diamond cutout 
So, hmm. I mean, this will still work. This is a gnarled rod, but he stuck toms that really didn't belong in that tom mount on that tom mount because at this time, the Thomas Superstar, I think it was an inch and an eighth. Don't quote me, but it was bigger. When the Grand Stars came out, they dropped the uh, tom mount rods to one inch. So I, okay. I know from experience that the Grand Star tom mounts would not fit in those kick drums. They would not fit in those t- that tom mount on that kick drum. So he used the old Tom mount and he put the new Toms on the old Tom mount. I, I mean, I'm getting really, really. To make it work. <laughs> to make it work. <laughs> but it's, if you're here for this, you want to know that kind of stuff. Right. right? May, some people may be confused. I'm really getting deep into it, but it's not the correct Tom mount, but it'll still work. You keep using it time after time after time, you're going to strip it out. But for the studio, who yeah. cares? He'll get another. Zildjian uh, A's at this time. Um, I think the hi hat was a Z Custom. It was the Z Custom Dino Beat, the 14 inch. Okay. So, cool. um, and and again, he's taken the second floor Tom out of the equation. We we said before that he doesn't really use it anyway. Why bring it to the studio? So, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, there's a lot of mics here. A lot. There's a ton of mic stands. I mean, this is like again, it's set up for the studio, where you don't really see this on the stage. It's more right. streamlined, and there's overheads on these huge i used to work at a studio that had these same like kind of uh i think that might be i don't want to say atlas it's something where there's like a three-point bottom that's on wheels and they are very awkward to move around and they're very maybe ours just had weird wheels but um but they will go up very high and they will hold anything so uh it's cool to see those um it looks really clean, though. Good, good cable management. Yeah, you know? yeah, Good job on that. And we know from the future, I don't, I don't particularly know about this album. We know from the Black Album, which we'll get to, but that there was microphones way up in the ceiling, and they yeah, and they sure. really spent some money and put some time in, in, into the mics. So that that's a cool thing to see. And the sticks, are, you know, they're the same. What he's using on tour, he's using in the studio, his his 5B with a tennis wrap tape or uh, whatever you want to call it. I know stick wrap yeah, makes yeah, something. Yeah. We discussed that, but... And, you know, sandbags, I see sandbags on the cymbal stands and the mic stands. Yep. <laughs> so it's just, well, there's so many of them. Yeah. It's like you might have to put one in a weird spot right, and have it right. lean. And uh, looks like some WD-40 down here, <laughs> some duct tape. That's but a, it's cool. Yeah, that's another thing I didn't notice, the WD-40, see? There you that, go. I, that, that's cool. That's why I love doing these because you just learn something. Well, you're just – because you've looked at it for so long that you're yeah. probably like – Drums, you know. drums, drums only. Drums and equipment. Yeah, exactly. And I'm that. always looking for WD-40 at all <laughs> points, every day of my life. With these drums, with this album, famously, there's like zero to no bass. What's your thought on that of why that happened? Or, I mean, you again, you are more diehard Metallica than me, and I'm sure people know and have, you know, theories, but what's the deal with so that? So there's a lot of rumors, and that's what they are, rumors. I'm not, I don't want to be the guy that says, this is what it was, and, and be hated or loved or whatever, whatever. But first of all, I heard it was to haze Jason, to screw around with Jason. But do you really believe that? Like, this is, this, even when I make a video, it's important to me. I want it to sound the best. Why would I do it to screw with somebody? So that's the first rumor yeah. I heard. I, I don't believe that. And the second one I heard is, so Lars could get the drums to sound like that, you know. <laughs> what do you want to say? Maybe he, ego or something. People have, have mentioned the drums are are obviously louder than everything else. The drums and the guitar are the loudest, so you can tell who mixed that out. <laughs> and James yeah. and Lars mixed that album. You know, was it yeah. the, the competition between all the other bands? Um, and the next album, everything is toned down. And it's a lot uh, based, the, the, the drums are more basic. And it was said that, you know, this album, Lars wanted to focus on the music instead of, you sure. know, letting the drums lead the music. He wanted to play for the music. So that's what I think it was. Just It was just that time where, you know. I get it. I agree, though, that I'm like really hazing. You don't usually do with a massive album. Right. And, and make it. And take the bass like, out to screw it. Somewhere. Yeah, haha, we got you. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't, I don't believe that. So I think yeah. that's just what it was at the time. All these bands are coming up. The, these are the guitars. These are the drums. They're loud. They're in your face, and we have to drop the bass to do it to get that yeah. kick drum sound. That's that's what I honestly think to answer your question. That's cool. So that's injustice for all. Um, that's inju- pretty much. No. Yeah, that's injustice yeah. for all. Yeah, that, yeah, yeah. 
So now we're going to move on to the Black Album. So the Black Album, the famous <laughs> Black Album, things really, really start to change here. So the first thing I'm going to mention, everybody asks me about it. Everybody asks me why. I don't know why. But yes, Sabian 15-inch rock hi-hats were used to record the Black Album. Absolutely. I don't know why he did it. He probably thought the sound was the best out of all the cymbals. This is a time where things are changing. He's bringing more into the studio. We know from the Black Album, they spent almost a year recording it. All kinds of things were used. So same place, it was recorded in one on, at, at One on One Studios. And this time they brought in Bob Rock. Bob Rock was the producer. They had said that they were unhappy with the sound they wanted to play for the song. They, wa they wanted it to sound thicker. And Bob Rock said he wanted them to sound like they do on tour. He saw live Metallica and he said it was great. So I guess they got together to make the Black Album. And the Black Album was recorded, like I said, for about nine months. And, and things, this is where things got really involved. There was a lot of different things going on for the Black Album. We're not using the tour kits anymore. So we, we spoke a little bit about that video that was released from the Drum Doctor and uh, Gunner yes, was in with it. With Gunner Olson. Yes. Yep. So I, uh, for years and years, I really never knew the story about these drums. I knew they weren't Tama. I knew they were different. And that video cleared up a lot of things. Um, so these were Gretsch drums. These are Gretsch USA series, uh, USA Custom. Now, the, the funny thing, or not the funny thing, the interesting thing about Gretsch is their shells were made by Jasper. Jasper sure. was a furniture company. This is some things I didn't even know. So Gretsch would make, uh, Gretsch had their shells made by Jasper. I think it's now somebody different. I think Keller makes it nowadays, but back then it was Jasper. So the drums that were used were provided by Ross Garfield and the drum doctor. Now, before we did this, I contacted Ross and right before that video came out and he was, he was great. He, he gave me the time of day, but the video came out. So I didn't have to, you know, talk to him, but thank you yeah. Ross for that. That was great. So Ross provided two drum kits for Lars for this. Originally. Album. Originally for Lars. For Lars. Wow. Not for Gunner. He did for Gunner, but also for, yes. for back, Lars. Back in the nineties, Metallica came to the drum doctor, said, send us your two best drum kits. They happen to be Gretsch, uh, two eight-piece Gretsch. He sent ones with the 22 by 16 kicks, and he sent ones with 24 by 16 kick drums. Uh, the 24 by 16 kick drums were, it was a color called Black Nitron. And the 22 by 16 were Antique Maple, I believe. So it, when he sent these two kits out, they, they tested them out, whatever they do. Lars ended up going with the 24 by 16s, which were the antique maples. But the run of toms were different. He went with the black nitron toms from the second kit. So he kind of mix matched the kits up uh, to his liking. Uh, wanted the 24s, liked these toms better. So let's go through the toms because they are a little bit different. So we mentioned the bass drums were 24 by 16 antique maples. Uh, no tom hold, no tom mounts in the top of those. Um, so the toms, uh, the first one always looked a little shallow to me, and I didn't really know the size. So I spoke with Gunner, and it looks like that first tom is a twelve by nine. Again, it's got the pinstripe heads. That's what, uh, what he usually runs, and that's what he recorded this album with. But the first tom is a twelve by nine. The second one looks to be a thirteen by twelve. The third, fourteen by thirteen. And here's where we get absolutely crazy. That is a 16 by 16 mounted floor tom. Yeah. <laughs> the stand is like, dear God, yes. put legs on me. <laughs> and, and if you watch the newest video with Gunner, you could see it's a floor tom. And Ross said something that resonated with me. Uh, he just blurted out. He said, he said, the biggest tom dictates the height of all your other toms, which is absolutely sure. true. Absolutely. I didn't even think about it that way. Yeah. But that is a legitimate floor tom, mounted floor tom. So, and then the uh, the real floor tom is an 18 by 16. Again, we're not using the second one. So yeah. that's pretty neat. And, and that was a really cool video that came out to clear all those things up. So now we got to talk about the snare. Now the snare... Uh, the snare is a Tama Bell Brass. It's a 14 by six and a half. But the odd thing about this snare is it had the freedom lugs. If, if you're really into Tama, you know, all the lugs have a, have a different nickname. And so these were the freedom lugs. They were 
they came with the grand star uh snare drums that were given with it they, okay they're they they are infamous and i will tell you they are not the strongest <laughs> they are not the strongest lugs you don't really want to tune those lugs higher they will break and crack as i found out personally Got it. <laughs> and if you look yeah. in the video when ross brings that snare out today there's all kinds of different lugs on it because okay. probably because they broke and they are impossible nowadays to find just one lug. You have to buy another snare and you have to strip the snare of the lugs. So I, I know I, I, I misspoke last uh, episode. I said it was a Gretsch snare. It was not a Gretsch snare. It was a Gretsch drum kit with the Tama snare. Tama Bell Brass, uh, Freedom Lugs. It had the nickname the Terminator because it was so loud. <laughs> it had such a, awesome. such a crack to it. I always wonder too about stuff like this. I'm like, how does an endorsed Tama mm-hmm. artist, I realize he's using the bell brass snare, but like, how does that affect the use of things in the studio? Or do they say, yeah, Screw it. I mean, when, when you're making an album, I think it's, you know, it's, Hey, w- this is crunch time. Whatever works, works. I'm going to take your Tama on tour, but when I'm making my art, I need what I need in the studio. Yeah. And yeah. I guess they respect that. I mean, you have to. Well, because studios yeah. have a lot of stuff. The engineer would be like, try a different snare, try a different snare, right. try a different time. Try a different head, different placement, different symbol, you know. And that's, yeah. that's again, where the Sabian uh, 15-inch rock hats came in. Probably to him, sounded the best, but he's not endorsed by them, so he can't run those on tour, you know. No, but it's also, I mean, nine months to record or however long it was, like, Time really adds up when you're trying different toms. Yes. You're trying different. I mean, you probably spend a month yes. on getting the right drum sound, and then you do that for a guitar. Yeah, and you do that for bass. So you do it for everything. That's why things take so long. Yes, and and, and and there's a lot of money involved in, in this too. I remember they. I think they spent a million dollars making that album, and it and, and it shows. It, it sounds amazing when when anybody wants to replicate something metal. They usually try for that black album snare those black album kick drums you know that's that that album is just for its time was amazing so totally. so i was glad to see all those things come out uh stan 6904 um still at this time you know the, beside yeah. aside from the sabian 15 inch rock hats that everybody asked me about it's all zildjian a's still so yeah 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 and uh, the PC, I think it's the the PC forty five, or I'm sorry, HP forty five pedals. He's using this is the the last edition before the first generation Iron Cobras came out. You know, gotcha. So, cool looking pedals. Yeah, those he used those on the Injustice for All tour kit, okay, uh, or should I cool. I should say Damage Justice tour kit. He used those. Uh, yeah, yeah, got it. <laughs> but and the sticks, he's still using the wooden sticks with the green pillow and the bass drum. Pillow and the bass. I think we all do Looks that. Like a cushion. <laughs> You know, it looks like a cushion and yeah. he's, got, he's sitting on on a uh, towel, sitting on a towel. But, you know, yep. you notice this towel is white because they're in the studio. So it doesn't matter on tour. It's always a dark color. <laughs> yeah, exactly. This is so, like a straight up bathroom towel. Right, yeah. right. So, um, excuse me. I said uh, 6904. It's the HC 104 TV stilts for the stance. I just noticed that. So, yeah, I just want to correct that. Hold your comments. <laughs> <laughs> There's so much going on. Sometimes I, know, I miss. I know. So yes. and we have we have, uh, you know, bass drum to hi hat mounts so we can get it closer. But then I see the legs are down. So there's just all kinds of clampage going on. And there's that yeah, legs are down. Yeah. That's very true. Because otherwise it's like, what's the point of having that? Those right. I had one. Those those the thing yeah. to get it closer is like. Uh, which got kind of defeated or, or, or replaced by the two leg hi hat stand right, right. or no leg. Yeah, to and just get it closer with the cable, the auxiliary cable. Yeah, um, yeah. And I'm still seeing the stick like on tour laying in the hi hat leg. So that's that's still going on. So, and that's where we, we were talking about mics. This is the one where they had the mics in the rafters and the far mics on the left and the far on the right. And there was just, they just were all in on this album. Yeah. All in. So big time. Yes. I mean, a million bucks. That's what million you're, paying for. you're paying for nine months. Yeah. And, and it is, it's pretty much documented in that first, uh, that first video there. And you did ask yeah. me last time and let's go back to it. Cause this is kind of funny. This is when it first started coming out. You asked me about Lars being a studio guy, right? Well, what I yep. could tell you is Lars had a tendency to jam both his drumsticks through the snare head and anchor. <laughs> 
Jeez. <laughs> and we could see that wow. for the first time in the, in the black. I'm sure he's done it all his life. I mean, who I want to do it all the time too, but I don't feel like buying new heads. <laughs> yeah, you screw it up and then you uh, damn, or you hit really hard instead of <laughs> yeah. jabbing. But right, so uh, we see yeah. we see him in that video, jam him right through the top, and then you know Bob Rock's like, "All right, take a quick break. Let's change the snare head. Why not? We got a million snare heads back there." Every yeah. every snare head I buy, what is it now? Forty bucks, thirty five bucks. I'm not doing that. <laughs> Seriously, I yeah. mean, back when they were like fifteen bucks, I was like, oh my god, I have to. Well, top and bottom, it's like yeah, you know, you spend right. forty uh, bucks on a on a. Yeah. Who, who wants to do that? He he can do that. He's got all the heads in the world, and yeah, this is also the first album where, where we see them doing some weird stuff in the background with like tambourines and cowbells and all kinds of stuff. I don't know if it made it to the final recording, but they tried everything on this album, so. Yeah, because like when you add like an egg shaker or a tambourine, you don't even need to hear it. Yeah, it just fills in the hi hat or something like right, that. Where right. you, you studio is where you do it. Again, they they have the time, they have the money, they yeah. have the. Let's try everything. We got nine months. So yeah. another thing I should mention on this kit, and I said earlier that the kick drums didn't have any tom holder ports. All the toms were on its on their individual stands. I think the 12 was hanging off one of the cymbal stands, which, yeah, those uh, stilt stands will definitely handle it. And then the 16 by 16 has got its own stand over there. So nothing's mounted to the bass drum. And, Crazy. and why not? Yeah. You get more resonance that way. So everything yep. was different uh, in this album. I know the albums leading up to this, most of it was, you know, holdover tour kit stuff. Or the tour kit stuff came into the studio. But this was yeah. completely different. And it and it really is from this time on. Now, I, I should also mention, and you you said, you know, why don't they use Tama or what what do the endorsers say? And I and I and I heard the old maple Tamas, like your grand stars and art stars, really couldn't hold a candle to the star classics. They were in the huh. studio. So maybe that's why they brought in Gretsch, because it just got a warmer, better feel. You know, I, yeah. I, I think that's important to note. Not particularly where sure. it came from, but the fact that at least he thought that the the maple on, on the newer star classics and Gretsch were a little better than what the art stars and grand stars were doing at the time. His so, current <laughs> touring kit, which is uh, what we're looking at here, that's, would be his... right. That's going to be the art star. Yeah, and he came from the gray damage justice, the which one behind, behind you. you, which. Yes. Uh, Everybody asked for so there it is. <laughs> there it is. I yes, you, like you did it. a poll. I did a poll. Yes. I, I know the people listening. Maybe not everybody was in the poll, but that one for yep. forty-three to twenty. So I hope everybody there you go. enjoys that. But that is the Damage Justice, which is a grand star, and that was your nine ply birch. And then the art stars we know were maple. I forget the ply on them. It's in our second episode, but they they were maple. So between those two, they used a Gretsch instead in the studio. Yeah, and like to really compare like uh, any of the pictures from from you know the tour versus the studio, studio absolutely covered in mic stands, mm -hmm. things everywhere, different colors, different right. drums, different snares, whatever. They're huge. They're all over. Symbol but you get to the everything. You get to the tour kits, and it's like refined, right, clean. Yeah. Everything. The monkey's there. But it's <laughs> everything's still, got its place, right? Every yes, yes. and, and so, just so they can see yes him. So the logo, yeah. the endorsement, the logos are there. Everything's there, and uh, yeah. But that's you're going on the road. You're taking a show on the road. You're taking the coolest drum kit of the time. Uh, you don't need that in the studio. That's for the road. So and you can use the smaller mics, the little like yeah. kind of like uh, miniature or or like little ninety degree mics yeah. that kind of come and are very tight mm -hmm. to the drums. Right. Right uh again whereas with the studio it's like could not be more stands <laughs> it's everywhere. not humanly possible you can't even see it. it's like looking into the woods it's just crazy yeah. there's stands everywhere yeah so yeah and but and and you could tell from that the sound that album what we got out of that album yeah, it was worth it it was definitely worth it so totally totally definitely yep. worth it uh so that's black album so, so where that, do we go from there so that's the black album um i wanted to mention something something cool quickly before we get to load. So I, you know, back then MTV was doing all these kind of uh, really cool contests and everything. We, we spoke about it last episode where they were up in the uh, tuck toy, Octuck doing the, <laughs> in the, in the big dome. So back then MTV was 
they were that, that was MTV was great back then. They did all these cool contests, and there was this one contest. I forget what it was called, but two winners got to go spend the day with Metallica, and it was cool to me because uh, they flashed to this drum set uh, that I had never seen anywhere else anywhere but in this one video still to this day i've never seen anything about it nobody's ever mentioned it but the rumor is that it was jason newstead's studio and in that studio they played a few songs and mtv cut back and forth there's no pictures on it online anywhere so again i had my phone and i was just taking quick pictures because i'm like wow this is cool i've never seen this thing yeah before. yeah so what it is and it, you could tell it was before load because he's still got his hair. He's got his beautiful mm-hmm. haircut. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And it's uh, it's a red Tama Art Star with the one piece high high tension lugs in chrome. Yes. That's not him. He does. He never used that on tour. So, and even though this is ninety two and ninety three, when I look at those symbols, they mimic directly the Master of Puppet tour kit both the huh. European and the American version, the symbol placement, because he's got the China on the right and the left. So that, that was pretty cool. And what I should also mention about this is he's got like, he, he used to use, well, he's always used like the high-end Titans, the 6904 and the 104TB stilts. This is the lighter version symbol stands. It's hard to tell in the picture, but this is the lighter version 6894T Tama Boom stands. Still heavy duty for what they are. Yeah, but this I'm is sure. different. So I thought this was pretty cool because it's extremely cool. Yeah. It's, you know, it's something we've never seen. It's an art star with the high tension lugs and the symbols. Uh, we see there's Zildjian and they mimic the master puppets. What is this thing doing there? What is, where does this fit in? <laughs> so is Jason known as like being someone who can play the drums pretty well? I mean, he had his own studio. Right. You're probably going to have a drum set. You're right. making a lot of money. Why not buy it? Exactly. And and he said, well, hey, if you guys are going to come over here and practice with me, why don't you get something, Lars, that fits you to write, you know? And, yeah. and why don't you, and I'm just speculating, you use your endorsement and get these Thomas over here. So, and just leave them here because why not? You've got an endorsement. So that's what I think. You know, I think, you know, Lars just yeah. had those sent there and had his guys set them up. And I don't need you to, to powder coat anything black. And I don't need the heaviest uh, symbol stands. Just send something yeah. to my specs over there. And that's what I really think. And there's nothing really out there to, to tell me otherwise. And, you know, there's a. F- yeah. Cause like usually if someone's like, I have a home studio, I'm going to get a drum set, they get like a pearl that they see at Guitar Center right. and some like, and two crashes, a ride, and a hi hat. But it's like, no, this is Lars's like exact. Right. He's going to play here. Set. Why not use what he's used to? So, yeah. um, and now I, I really wasn't going to discuss this kit, but I had put this on my personal page and, and everybody was asking me and, and it really uh, caused kind of an uproar. So I, I wanted to mention it today. I think it is a studio and it, and it fits in with this studio episode, kind of like another Easter egg. So I thought it was pretty cool to mention. I like the color. Yeah, the cherry wine. It's cherry wine, and that was very popular back in the eighties. And cherry wine, when it's in good shape, man, what a what a beautiful color. Yeah, um, and it absolutely not quite like the candy apple reds, but the cherry wine was beautiful in itself. Uh, which is yeah, which is sure. the same color as his European variation Thomas Superstars for the yes. for the Damage Incorporated kit. But even so. in pictures, you got to be careful because I'm like in certain ones, I'm like that's like fire truck red. Right. But like in other ones, it's like, oh, no, that's more of that, yeah, uh, that cherry stain wine. Yeah. Kind of, yeah. And that's what yeah. happened to me. Like we were discussing with the Black Album for years. I'm like, well, what is it? The light, the light, it, it, you know, this camera that who knows. But yeah, this one, I don't think we're going to find out <laughs> like we did with no. the Black Album. I think this one no. is long gone. So, or Jason still has it. Or, and is like, or he still has it. And he's who knows? Yeah. Hey, Jason, if you yeah. watch this, hey, do, do a little video. <laughs> We'd like to see this yeah. again. Take a picture and send it to <laughs> right? us. Right? That, that's yeah. cool, though. So that's something I wanted to mention. Pretty cool. Uh, MT- cool. MTH 300 uh, Omni mount. Uh, t- um, Tom mounts, I'm sorry. So cool. pretty cool. This was, and again, this was, I, I did, I, I watched some of those contest ones where they go to like, where all these different locations and stuff, and they are pretty cool. Metallica. Yeah. Definitely played ball yes. with like MTV back and then. MT- you know? And MTV was, it was really cool back then. I mean, I don't even know if it exists anymore, but it's like 16 and pregnant and this and that. I mean, nobody even watches <laughs> yeah. that anymore. But Teen mom. Yeah, yeah, that was just, that was that was a great time back then for heavy metal. And and that's when it started dying out. And then you had your Nirvanas come in and, and we could tell by, 
you know, load came out and things changed. It's just the last of a, a really cool period. And yeah. one of the last times we're going to see these giant nine pieces yeah. in this studio. Well, yeah. But they cut their hair. They cut so their let's, hair. Let's, uh, well, <laughs> so moving on to load. <laughs> yeah. So load. Load is kind of muddy too. Not as bad as St. Anger. But there's a lot of different stuff going on. Really early on, there's another MTV video. And it's kind of like they're just hanging out with Metallica. And we could see them in Lars's basement. And it's Lars and James just screwing around writing load songs. So I wanted to mention this kit too. And this looks like that kit that went on that really quick 95 tour that we talked about last episode. This is definitely a white art star. And we could see again the chrome high tension lugs. Uh, this, this is a, I think this was piano white at the time, hmm. and we got the chrome high tension lugs, which looks to me to be a ten by nine and a twelve by eleven rack toms. Before the album was recorded, we could see he he cut the drum set down in size very early on. This looks like, you know, we we spoke about when he went and played with Sean Kenny's kit and this and that. But, yeah. but this is the first time we're really seeing it. And this is kind of like his home studio. And so it's cut down now. He's removed the right and the left rack tom. The 16 by 15 is gone. And the, yeah. the 10 by uh, 9 is gone. So Which stayed for our, ever yeah, then to have that. F- pretty much from when the Black Album uh, kit, or not the Black Album, I'm sorry, the Kill em All kit was painted and he added the second kick drum. Up until yeah. like pretty much, I think this is the first one. I mean, we talked about the tour, but this is before the 95 tour. Yeah, screwing around in his tons. basement right yeah. so so that's an art star that's an art star in piano white like i said that's a 10 by 9 and a 12 by 11 rack toms the kick drums are going to be your 22 by 16 and the floor toms are going to be your 16 by 16 and your eight uh i'm sorry 18 by 16 i see the same you know thomas stilt stands but i can't really see any pedals you know it's just another quick video where i was snapping pictures on my phone um it looks to me like an AW526 Maple Snare from the rough pictures that I have. There's only a few, and it's kind of hard to tell, but that, that's what it looks like to me. Yeah. So Zildjian symbols, and we could see, like, from the coming Star Classic Tour kit, uh, the right side, he's got the china on his right now, mounted right above the floor, Tom, that, that's still to this day. Um, yeah. Just some really, really early raw photos in his basement. So I wanted to to show this too. Yeah, I just like seeing, I mean, obviously we all like seeing drums of any kind right. anywhere. But like, it's just cool to be like, like this is his home kit yeah. at that time, you know? And right. why not? Right. And like, the, again, what shows up out on the road doesn't have those lugs maybe, but it's like, right. this is just his like uh, mess around right. kit uh, in the basement. Another cool variation here. And like I said, we did see it on the, the those three shows in 95. So it did go on the road. At least some of it yeah. did. At least the kick drums, yeah. I know, did. But, uh, you know, I thought that was a really cool video and kind of fit into this yeah, episode. So I wanted to mention it. Absolutely. And this kind of shows the classic, like, like I mean, I think a lot of people know this, but uh, James and Lars really do a lot oh, of yeah. the writing. Mm-hmm. So Absolutely. this is kind of like we're seeing that happening with right. with photos like this where again for people watching james is like standing there in front of him uh, of lars at the drum set and lars is doing the classic lars pose <laughs> kind of thinking with his hand on his yeah. on his mouth and and you can uh, uh, if you watch the video you could see him doing all kinds of screwing around with the lyrics and adding stuff yeah. and it's, it's a really cool video again that mtv put out there and that was that was really cool back in the time so yeah uh so these are some cool easter eggs i wanted to put out there whatever you yes. want to call them so but then we record load. So then next. we record load. And now things, you know, things are getting different again. So let's talk a little bit about load. Uh, let, let's say load, reload, and um, Garage Inc. Because this next kit I'm going to discuss was used in the studio to pretty much record all three. Pretty much the mid-90s all the way up to, you know, St. Anchor to early 2000s. It was used in some form or another. So right off the bat, the kick drums. They are the same Gretsch kick drums that were used on the Black Album. Wow, cool. In that antique maple finish. Virgin kick drums, no tom portholes. So that's that's something cool. And the rack toms are now Star Classics. This is the first time Star Classics have been in the studio. And that looks to me like a blue marine fade, the color, 
uh, yeah. Star Classic Maples. Um, now the snares on this, there's there's a couple snares we see in the video. Uh, it looks like they had something back then called like the Maple Thin Series. I think it was at SMS 65 was the model number. So we I see some of that. And then I'll, I'll see a bell brass from time to time. So again, it's the studio. They could change at the drop of a hat, change what they're using. Yeah. This is just the pictures that I found doing the best that I can do. This is what I've seen from not actually being there. So no, they're great. They're real pictures. Yeah. You know what I mean? They're right. like professionally shot photos and, uh, 96 ish. What they're probably recording this. What? 95, so, 96. Yeah. So load load was recorded in 95 and, but a lot of a reload stuff was recorded too. Then, okay, you remember they released Load and then Reload came after. It was supposed to be like a double thing, but they wanted to go on tour that summer, so they kind of put it on the back burner. So, yeah. I imagine you know it was a mix match. I couldn't tell you what exactly which song was recorded, but pretty much like I said, all the way up until Saint Anger, these are the drums. So this is going to run you from like about ninety five. I like the sign uh, in the back there that says parking for Danes only. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty cool. Yeah, no yeah. no monkey this time, but we got that sign. So No monkey. No. So from this picture that that I have right up in front of me, we have now a, a double tom stand. So the double tom stand, uh, let me look at the model number here. It uh, looks like an HW99N tom stand. And cool. because, like I said, those are virgin kick drums and nothing's mounted in them and you get better resonance that way. Besides, they look to me like they're not his anyway. They're Those are the ones we talked about from the Black Album. So Ross is probably renting them again. And gotcha. they will come up uh, one more time, I believe. But those were the kick drums used. And we got a lot of Zildjian cymbals. I'm thinking it's, we got a ride. We do have a ride. We have a splash. A lot of things continue to change at this point. Um, we see some Sabian, the Sabian hi-hats are back and they'll show up again, but okay. th those uh, look like his forbidden, the forbidden <laughs> fruit. Don't mention that, but yeah, those look <laughs> to be his favorite in the studios. Maybe his favorite hi-hats of all time, but we're not going to go there, yeah, but yeah, yeah. so there's a lot going on here. So the floor toms to me are hard to see. I mean, I can see the different sizes. Oh, uh, let me let me go over the sizes. I mean, they're pretty much they're yeah. your ten by nine, your twelve by eleven, sixteen by sixteen, and eighteen by sixteen floor top. Um, the kick drums are your twenty four by sixteen. We know that because they're from the Black Album uh, recording. But the floor toms for me are hard to see in any picture I've seen color. And the only reason that I mention that is because there's been a couple rumors out there that they were the Gretsch floor toms. Uh, now used as floor toms, the one would have been mounted for the Black Album. But there's always been a rumor that that's what was used on this recording. Ve Black Nitron. The Black Nitron Gretsch USA series with the Jasper shells. There's no real pictures where I could see the color. I don't know. I kind of favor toward, towards it being Star Classics, honestly, in that uh, sure. that Blue Marine fade there. I love Star. I had a Star Classic kit. I mean, it would have been like 20. 2002 so it was like obviously after this but it was like they're great drums yeah they're, they sound amazing that's what i hear I, yeah maybe in the future i'll pick up some um yeah uh but that's pretty much what it is from then till now even to this day it's still star classic i mean they've upgraded them and they've changed them here and there but he has stuck with star classics in the studio pretty yeah. pretty much this last 72 seasons album so yeah. And that's the episode. No, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, no, there's plenty, plenty more. But yeah, that's uh, I like that blue finish, and and uh, he God, he has a ton of symbols. It's like he there's less toms and more but symbols just the, and more symbols, right? And the, the he still has a huge, you know, really cool looking footprint for the right. drums. And and as we mentioned before, they're starting. The, the drums at least are starting to tone down and go with the song instead of doing all these crazy breakdowns like we did in Injustice for All. So he's dropped the toms. So now he's playing uh, more direct, let's say more direct. So I guess maybe you don't need all those toms, he's thinking. But <laughs> so. Well, or and you can modify what you play to like right. double up on each tom when you have to do a huge run. Right. So, you know, think, to make it work live. Yeah, but. things are starting to change, that's for sure. And the music we got out of this album, we're not going to discuss the music, but it is different. So it did change. So 
there you go with that. There was a bit of an identity crisis yeah. kind of, uh, or like, but the whole world changed. Yes. Like uh, you said, with, right. with Nirvana and grunge came in and, but I've always said, if you took the load album and you put anybody else's name on that album, that people would, would just, they would love that album. The only reason it got the reception it got, I feel, is because it had Metallica's name on it. And people were so used to hearing one thing from them, and then they change. So it's still a great album to me. You know, I mean, yeah, yeah. I, I mean, the house that Jack built is an amazing song, you know, hero of yeah. the day. It's so, so things, yeah, things are no, definitely. Totally. <laughs> Well, and if we uh, do our kind of CSI work here, we see some money on his little table uh, there. Pro- probably for lunch. <laughs> probably for lunch. Uh, looks like a water and uh, something over here. I'm not so, really sure. Got sunglasses? A, Could be. Possibly some sunglasses. Yeah. Pad of paper. Pad of paper. Taking notes. Yep. Uh, yeah, that's pretty cool. This is a cool studio shot where you've got everyone. I like how... James is just kind of laying, sitting back yep. while recording. And, we should um, we should mention the uh, the famous Lars Ulrich headband uh, sweatband up there. He's uh, he's got yes. that on that over the headphones. <laughs> that's I should have mentioned that, but that's like in every album he's ever recorded, he's got that on. That's a little cool thing we mentioned there. Um, symbols are different. There's a if we look at the ride, number one, it's not in the brilliant finish, and number two, it looks like a twenty inch ping ride to me. I know, yeah. you know, some people have mentioned that before. Uh, we've got a splash symbol. Uh, looks like a 12-inch Z custom splash. Uh, we got a couple of Chinas going on. And then we have your normal, probably your A Zildjian in brilliant finish. So there's a, yeah. there's a lot of stuff with symbols going on. Different placement. No, so I love a good splash. And a 12-inch splash is pretty big. Right. So it's not like he's got a 6-inch little tiny yeah. splash there that's very unmetallica. I mean, a 12 <laughs> is kind of a good... Yeah, normal's uh, like 10, uh, right? And he's he's got the 12, so... Yeah, he's pretty big. Pinstripe heads. By looking at the pictures, we see the pinstripe yep. heads. Clear. Um, your snare your snare would be the uh, coded control dot. And he's pretty much synonymous with him. He's always used that, you know. Um, yeah. Looks like some muffling on it. Like a, I, it almost looks like a, now there's like those snare weights yes. or something. It almost looks like something sitting on the snare. Something along that line too. Yeah. 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 Possible so. perspiration here uh, on the leg. Always. Always. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta be some, some sweat. It, oh, and this is the ahead drumsticks, yes. right? Oh, that's, that's a good catch. See, that's another thing you, I, I didn't notice. It's the ahead drumsticks. Yeah. But we know around yeah. this time he switched anyway. We know after the Guns N' Roses uh, tour, he was starting to get fed up with breaking them when it, when it got cold in the, in the more northern states. So, and, and they were owned at that point by the baseball company. Easton. Easton. Yes. yes. Easton ahead sticks, yep. which I just remember hearing that and being like, wow, that's interesting. Yeah. Monitor monitor mix over yep. here so you can, he can dial himself in there. Yep. Um, pretty cool. A lot, pretty lot of cool. stuff going on. And uh those Sabian hats are there, and then we see Z Customs sometimes. So things are in, things are out. But the Sabians have been around in the studio for a while, and th- and they'll be there for a little longer. <laughs> yeah, so every yeah. everybody wanted to know about that. I can't tell you why. I could just assume that's what he liked. So he liked it. He liked it. He liked it, he liked it he a lot. Yeah. It. So if you look on yeah. his hi hat stand, there's a picture of somebody or something. If you zoom in, yes. Who who is that? I can't make it out. So in the comments. Let me know who that is. <laughs> yeah, who would Lars have a picture of on his? Yeah, right. was he married or like? I mean, I don't know if you'd, but you, who who would really put up a picture of their wife or girlfriend on their? I, I don't stand? think he had kids at that time. Kids, uh, yeah, yeah. I, I don't know, but uh, that's maybe his dad or something. Possibly. I don't know. So everybody in the comments can look at that picture and. Tell me what you think, because I can't figure yeah. that out. You know, we need to like get the like music from like Unsolved Mysteries Unsolved or something. Mysteries. That's <laughs> yes. what it is. That's what it is. Yes. Chris and I just paused to think about the name of that yes. show for about a minute. And uh, yeah, we yep. need Unsolved Mysteries on this. Um, all right. So uh, moving on from that picture. Yes. Um, <laughs> Spent a little bit, carry a little on. bit of so time on that from picture. There. <laughs> so if there's, let me check uh, here. Yeah, I think that's pretty much it. Well, we see this weird drum kit. And I can't really make it out. Describe it for people who were like just kind of so, just listening. Because this is like double wood yeah, rims. It's, this is like a Levon Helm looking drum set it's here. It's like a uh, 
a miniature bass drum. It's kind of like the hoops on the bottom and top of the toms would be like your bass drum wooden hoops. And they have those kind of claws on there. I really struggled with this one, and I, I can't figure out what it is. Again, if anybody knows, put that in the it comments. Almost, but. Uh, this is probably not, but it almost looks like an Ayot drum set or yes. something to me. Yes, that does ring a bell. Like uh, a great Canadian brand. Um, haven't done an episode on them yet, but I will. Um, but Ayot always had that kind of uh, uh, wooden rim there's yeah. other brands that have wooden rims but this has claw hoops yep. uh, or, or, or claws um to to get the hoop on there and uh so yeah i really struggled with this one i couldn't figure that just like the ride the lightning error this is the one kit i, I couldn't figure out either so but it's miked it's miked and there's a tambourine on top of the hi-hat so it's different you know but again it seems it, like goofing around right. kind of kit this is or the studio like, and there's all kind of things and going on and who knows but, yeah, so we got a picture of him playing a djembe yep, here. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Miked. I mean, so maybe that was just trying stuff. Try Yeah, just like the Black Album. Yeah, and there's he's really happy. There's another one um, on the up on the Blue Marine Toms there. It's like this kind of like brass plate. I don't know yet what the proper name for that would be. Some kind of... Definitely some percussion. Yes. Like LP or Scrape. something LP would have made back then, you know, yeah. like along with their cowbells and their ice blocks. And so that's hanging from the cymbal stand. So that's pretty yeah. cool to see. Um, so again, explain what these pictures are, though. Like this group of kind of weird mystery so, pictures. So, is this, this is Garage Inc.? Well, this is that time period. And I mean, and I'm not trying to make a joke. The only way you're going to be able to figure it out is by looking at his hair, honestly. Because <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah. And, and, really. and this is that time period these drums were used for those three albums. And again, I mean, I think uh, they were all recorded at the plant in LA, but you had Bob Rock producing them and they were pretty much used for Load Reload and Garage Inc. And I, there's videos out there of the Garage Inc. Uh, recording. So they're, it, it really all kind of blends together. It looks like well, 98. Right, that's, that. what, that's what the stamp is, 98. So there you go. But it Gar could be wrong. Garage yeah. Inc., you know, some of those are wrong. Uh I would say Garage Inc. If, if that was um, if that date is correct, that's what he would be recording. Yeah. And that again is the, the Star Classic Blue Marine uh, Fade Toms there, or Marine Blue, or so, whatever I said. Yeah, Marine Blue Fade. Sorry. Obviously, more of just like a hey, I've got a disposable camera, or I'm taking a picture for fun, rather than like yeah, the load ones were like these are professional right pictures. professional pictures. So. Um, yeah, red headband on the head there. Red headband, yeah. But all kinds of it's all kinds of neat things going on in this time period. Different, you know. Huge contrast I, from the early albums yeah. to now. Comment about if you know what this weird kind of drum set is. Okay. But all right, so Chris and I are now. We, we've just talked for a second. We are now at the point of Saint Anger. Saint Anger and Saint Anger, I should should say, is kind of like the movie. Very muddy. <laughs> there is a yeah. lot. A lot going on with the different drums and all kinds of uh, gear yeah. hanging around. So we should. Uh, we're going to. Yeah, we're going to pause and probably do that one in a part two, because, again, my general feeling is people who might be interested in that kind of iconic for good, for better or for worse, iconic snare sound and the drum sound. And it just kind of a an interesting. I mean, Metallica was going through a lot then, which is all documented in that some kind of monster uh, documentary, but I think it's probably best if we're going to do that as a part two, because uh, again, we're probably an hour and a half in. Chris and I are about two hours into recording this, but um, I think that's what we're going to do. So stay tuned. Next episode will be Chris Ruscio back on the podcast. We're going to close things out with part two of the studio kits, and then I think then we will fully have covered everything <laughs> in uh, in Lars's gear life uh as much as humanly possible yeah so i mean there's all kinds of variation with music videos and video music award shows but we got the main stuff in with all this yeah so. yeah oh you just need another easter egg maybe that's <laughs> something down the road possibly we possibly but <laughs> yeah, uh, we'll give you a break sometimes when i when i do the shows with uh paul wells who did tony williams and did neil peart it's like once we get done with them and they're you know three three two-hour episodes we're like all right I'll talk to you in a year. <laughs> Let's give it some time because we need to think about that. Right, but, right. Um, anyway, Chris, while we're doing this, you, as we wrap up, are doing some cool 
awesome recordings oh. and you're actually getting yourself out there now. Well, so tell people where they can find you, man, and what you got going on. Well, I'm on Instagram, uh, ChrisRZ28. Um, so like I said earlier on, I'm not that good with technology or whatever. So I picked up a Yamaha EAD10. I actually picked up two of them and split it. And I'm trying to make covers for the first time in like 30 years. So you can yeah. check out some covers. Um, uh, you know, I'm going to continue to do it. I'm, I'm having fun with it. I'm having fun doing it. Uh, it's a little frustrating to record yourself, but I'm having fun. Yeah. So, you know, I'll do, I'll be doing Metallica, uh, covers. Cause that's, as you can see, that's what I enjoy. And, you know, people ask me, oh, are you going to get this kid in? Are you going to get that kid? And yeah, I'm going to give them all equal amount of time. So yeah. and do different songs on different ones. So if you're interested in that, you can check me out at Chris RC 28. And like I said, last time you want to build something, you want to know something, ask me anything, but please remember that sometimes Instagram is a little weird and it put your message like in this weird mailbox, like uh, requested messages and I won't see it. And I'm like, Oh my God, I feel so bad for this guy. He's asking me (laughs) and it's been months and then I'll get back to you. So don't take it personal. It's just, everything gets all muddied up in there. So, but yeah, uh, yeah, so that's where you can find me. I mean, I love it. You said you were, when we recorded it first, you said, I'm thinking I'm going to get into covers and we've texted throughout the year and been like, you know, you're like, Hey, I'm doing it is, you know, how's this sound? What do you think of this? And it's like, I think it's awesome that you're actually doing it. And everyone on YouTube who's watching this, I think can back me up when I say Chris has to put his stuff on YouTube for people (laughs) to see. It's a different beast than, than Instagram and stuff. But like, I always equate it to like, I mean, YouTube is like the ocean. There's so many people it's but everyone's gonna love what you're doing so I, if you guys want to see chris on youtube comment below right. and say yes yes youtube chris <laughs> i i definitely want to do that but so now i'm at the stage and, and i i love the yamaha e, ead 10 it it made this thing so easy for a guy like myself who didn't know sure. anything but now i'm kind of getting to that stage where i'm like oh man i'm not happy with this sound so Every time I do something, I'm trying to do it a little better. Now I'm thinking about microphones and how I can move on from the EAD to not quick. Because as, as you can tell, I don't do anything quick because I'm still trying to learn. But, but it's better to be thorough. Right. So that's what that's what gets me about the YouTube. I want to, you know, I want to get it refined. But I'm still having fun doing it. And in, I know. in, it's in the end, who yeah. really cares? It's I'm, well, I'm having a blast. I've learned that it's like uh, analysis paralysis where you're like, God, I got to get it perfect. And then a year later, you're like, wow, I never put anything out. And, yeah. and you you are putting things out. But I'm, I'm like, trying people just people just want to see want to see you. And um, anyway, because everyone's loved these episodes. Yeah. So thank you to everyone for watching this uh, part one of the Studio Kits uh, series. We'll be back with part two. Stay tuned. Subscribe if you're not already. Um, check it out on Patreon if you want to support the show. But um, this is just uh, Chris has put a lot of time into this, and I'm glad it pays off for you guys. Actually, people are liking it and enjoying yeah. it and watching it. And it to me, it makes it all worthwhile to do, you know, 50 hours of editing on the editing on these. And uh, I'm sure you, you feel the same way, Chris, yes. about putting all the time in with and, the research. I'm just so. I'm happy everybody's getting some enjoyment. And thank you for commenting. And thank you to the guys that give me all this information that I don't know with the lugs and this and that. And, you know, thanks to Eric for these pictures and just thanks everybody for being involved and, and commenting yeah. and stuff because you, know, you have a good time. I have a good time. Everybody, you know, get something out of it. That's what it's all about. So yeah. thank you. Absolutely. Thank you. Well, Chris, this has been a pleasure, Definitely. my friend. Uh, we will pick it up next time. We'll record it soon. And uh, thank you for being here. I'm looking forward to part two. Thank you. Thanks for having me.